It's Friday, August 6, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. Linux news was actually pretty slim this week, so this episode's gonna be kinda short. On Monday, the Mego project announced version 1.0 IVI release. This is the in-vehicle infotainment edition. It comes with a sample home screen and taskbar, sample navigation and Bluetooth built-in, as well as a whole new UI for your vehicle's infotainment center. So if you weren't distracted enough by all the gadgets you've got, now you've got one more thing you can put in your car. The list of supported hardware is still pretty slim at this point, but it'd be really cool to see this running inside of a car. In other news, VLC version 1.1.2 released late last week, and it has already made it into the Ubuntu 10.10 repositories. If I hadn't mentioned it before, version 1.1. whatever of VLC is going to start supporting GPU acceleration, so all of you with a very decent video card will be able to use your graphics card to do a lot of the rendering and take some of the heat off of your CPU. Yes, the porn will be faster now. Speaking of Ubuntu 10.10, Alpha 3 for Ubuntu 10.10 released this week. There are very few changes to it, mostly just updated software packages, but they've actually changed the netbook interface over to the Unity interface by default. It doesn't have anything to fall back on, so you really can't test it within VirtualBox. They've moved the KDE 4.5 up to an RC version, so it's a little bit closer to being final. Basically just a couple of tiny steps forward, but we still have several more releases to go before it is final in October. A couple more things about Ubuntu 10.10 Alpha 3. They've added one conf to the repository, so you're going to be able to synchronize all your configurations across multiple Ubuntu 10.10 systems. They've also, of course, upgraded to kernel version 2.6.35, which just happened to go stable today. And speaking of that, kernel version 2.6.35 is now officially stable, according to Linus. There are tons and tons of great improvements in it, but the biggest things I'm seeing are network scaling across multiple CPUs, so if you've got a multi-core processor, it will actually spread that load out and make it run a little bit faster. Of course, ButterFS has been moved from experimental to a stable state, so you should be able to install from that. It still doesn't work with Grub yet, so you do still have to have an ext3 or ext4 partition in order to boot, but you can use that on your root file system, your home file system, and whatever else you want to. There are, of course, tons of other improvements in 2.6.35. I'll have a link to all that in the show notes, which will be in the doobly-doo. And with 2.6.35 just out the door, they're already hard at work getting 2.6.36 ready. Now, a part of 2.6.36, they're going to actually roll AppArmor into the kernel now. AppArmor is a mandatory access control system that's an alternative to SE Linux like you'd see on Fedora. It's been in Ubuntu for quite a while now, but now it's actually going to be a part of the kernel. Alright, enough of that geeky talk, let's talk about phones for a little bit. According to internetnews.com, Android has passed RIM as the top mobile OS for quarter two of 2010. It looks like Android devices counted for 33% of the total devices sold, RIM accounted for 28%, and Apple devices were 22%. Now that said, there are how many Android devices versus how many Apple devices and how many Blackberry devices? There are a lot of Blackberries out there, but there are a ton of Android devices, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Speaking of Android, Google reports that nearly 60% of the devices running Android are actually running version 2.1 already. 2.2's been out for a couple of months now, and only 4.5% of the Android market is actually accounted for with that. Now you'll notice that doesn't account for 100% of the market, 35% of them are still running version 1.5 or 1.6. As I mentioned before, when Android 3.0 comes out, they're supposed to be making some significant UI improvements so that other manufacturers won't necessarily want to use their own UIs, which will make the rollout process go a whole lot faster and a whole lot smoother. And speaking of new things coming out, the last thing I'm going to mention, HTC has a new device called the Glacier that might be coming out. It's rumored to blow everything else out of the water. An entry showed up on a benchmarking website from an unknown dual-core HTC device codenamed Glacier. Now this entry has since been removed, but it was actually clocking in at three times faster than HTC's fastest mobile phone. And according to the article that I've read, that should only be able to be done by a dual-core device. Now there's really not any other details other than that, I just thought it was kind of a cool thing to throw on the end there. So, well that's all for now, thank you guys for watching, and if you haven't already, make sure to go check out my Facebook page, facebook.com slash thisweekinlinux, check out the Twitter page, twitter.com slash thisweekinlinux, or come hang out in the IRC channel, irc.freenode.net, and the channel name is TWIL, or you can go to thisweekinlinux.com slash chat if you don't have an IRC client. But that's about it, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.